I told you this was our first time playing with each other? <laughs>
very briefly, my name is Rasha. I am with Afikra, a global organization that is invested in cultivating curiosity about the Arab world and celebrating it. And what better person to be with today? Um, I'm going to dive right in, OK? <laughs> For a lot of people probably in the audience listening to this music reminds us of our tetas and our jiddos and our mamas and our babas and actually Yam Safir Wahdak was my father, Allah Hamas favorite song. And we listened to it throughout my life growing up. But then hearing it here on stage in New York in 2023 in a very contemporary setting, it made me wonder, Oud is such a classic instrument from our part of the world. But does bringing a classic instrument to the contemporary world depend on the sort of artist that performs it? Or is it about changing the sound? and changing the melody of it. And how have you experienced bringing Oud into the world today? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. <laughs> I just sprung that on you. No, it's a, it's a good question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, given, like, I, I'm a huge fan of the traditional stuff. Uh, my Jiddo also loved, Yam, Abdul Wahab was like top for him. And he loved Yam Safar Wahdak also as well. So. I grew up like around the classics and um, that was always like my foundation. But then of course, like I grew up in Southern California with like a bunch of other influences that like musically that were like around me. Like I grew up as a guitar player, like playing like classic rock and stuff, <laughs> like very different. Um, but yeah, it's, it, was, uh, it was kind of like, um, I think naturally just happened because of my environment that I was like exposed to a lot of different sounds and, and like a blend of music cultures in a way and so I think naturally things are just like always moving and growing and like they're all you know just by like existing in today's spaces and stuff like that in whatever context I'm trying to play and whether I'm like trying to lay down on like a pop track or something I try to um, like keep the roots but then it's always like the face is always changing it's like a, you know I Sometimes people are like adding a lot of like you know electronic instruments and synthesizers now with oud and stuff. So it's like there's a, a huge blend that's happening. I think that naturally that's just always pushing the boundary and the, like p giving their oud like new spaces and newer mu in like uh, other music and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and I think you know that's not blasphemous to bring oud into the <laughs> into a modern context. I know that you've collaborated with a lot of people. I see my very old friend Omar there <laughs> that you've collaborated with um, in terms of genres. Um, what blends mostly with oud and what doesn't, and what is like the the ultimate genre that you you want to see oud bring oud to? Hmm. Well, I think naturally a lot of initial blending that was happening was like a lot with jazz because of like a lot of similarities with like the improvisatory nature and stuff like that, and modes and things like that. And I, but I think that um, now, like more recently, we've seen a lot of like younger. Um, Arab artists uh, coming up with like with a bunch of I mean a range of varieties. I mean we've we've had like people doing Arab hip hop uh, like Omar Fandem here for a while, <laughs> and you know we've had like that. So we have the, this influence, and I think like that pairs beautifully for some reason. I don't know. I think that whether or not like hip hop uses a lot of hijaz too, so I don't know. It works with it, but there's just like a vibe where it, like it goes well. I think, and also. Um, a lot of the pop stuff that we've done, you know, like we make it, it works. It's, it sounds cool, like in, in certain contexts and stuff. And people, a lot of the younger generation that maybe are not going to sit and listen to like a, a six minute to SEM, but they hear like they're in like, you know, a, a pop song. And they're like, wow, that was really cool. Um, or even even a lot of now like R&B artists. And it sounds really cool. Actually, it's kind of like electric guitar vibe, but with their old. So, it's, it, you know, there's a vibe. It's, it's, a, it's a cool thing. I mean, I think art is a lot about borrowing from other um, genres and, uh, you know, being inspired. I don't know, art is, art making is a mystery. <laughs> I, I'm a writer and most of my writing is about writer's block and about thinking and about reading, um, much more so than it is about writing. And mm. I think, I imagine your process is the same, that mm. a lot of music making is about what you listen to. Yeah. and who you borrow inspiration from. So give us the roster of the inspiration here. <laughs> totally. The traditional and the, the surprising. Yeah. Um, I've been inspired by like so many random things musically, <laughs> you know. Uh, of course, all the, like a lot of the traditional stuff. Um, 
this song that I played today, um, one of the pieces, um, which was, uh, it was called Nada. It's a song in Ajam, and I was listening to Lis Safakir for Um Kalthum one morning, and this has that like, beautiful intro part. Da da dum pum 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 da 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 dum pum pum. You know that little intro, and I just like really liked that little intro. And I was messing around, I just looped it, and I, I started like tweaking it, and then from like one inspiration, it started morphing and like changing, and then taking inspo from here and there. But like a lot of times, it starts like that of just something that I can't get out of my head. You know, and then I'm like, oh, I need to, I want to take this. Or sometimes a part of a song that, like, a little section of a song that I'll hear that was too short. And I'm like, that was so beautiful. Like, that idea needs to just be, like, taken. Expanded. and Yeah. So sometimes it's just, I, that's happened, like, with commercials. I'm not, you know, I'm like sitting on a commercial and I'm like, wow. Someone who like, wrote that jingle out there is <laughs> so, going to be very happy. Yeah, about. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to put your finger on it. Yeah. But I'm always trying to be, like, a creative thief, you know. I mean, we're, we're all artists are thieves at some point or another. <laughs> um, I also think art is a lot about resistance. And as Palestinian artists, you know, whatever our cultural output is, um, we're sort of uh, reclaiming the narrative and giving ourselves per, you know, permission to narrate. Mm -hmm. And I, I was listening to some of your music that you've done with you know, our generation's poet laureate, Muhammad al-Kurd. <laughs> and um, I wanted to hear a bit about your latest piece, which was very um, aptly titled A Sarcastic Love Letter to Politicians Everywhere on the 30th Anniversary of the Oslo Accords. <laughs> and so if you could tell us a bit about that collaboration and, and, and how, how you see your art as resistance. For sure, yeah. Um... So Mohammed and I met actually in 2017 um, during a Students for Justice in Palestine National Conference <laughs> yeah, in Houston. And we were both performing and we just immediately clicked and we were like, we need to work on something together. And um, we had previously put out like a poetry album, poetry and oud album, but we wanted to write something actually for my dad because he actually has a really good voice, my father, and he, I mean, he oh, has a bar... that's your dad on the Yeah, track. that's my dad, okay. yeah. He has a barbecue restaurant, so he's not like a singer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Do you want to plug the restaurant? Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's called Ham Bones. <laughs> uh, if you're ever, yeah, if you're ever in Bellflower or uh, Huntington Beach, California, you can get some barbecue from my dad. Um, but, yeah, he, he actually, he's got a really funny personality. He's very sarcastic. He's just like a big teddy bear goofball. And, I, and you know, we, Mohammed loves him so much, too. He's just like, he was like, we need to write something funny for him. But that's sarcastic, but we want it to be, like, poignant and, like, also meaningful. And so Mohammed, like, came up with these words, this, po this poem, Nasak. It was, um, and the words were just so, like, on point. And it was talking about not just, like, the occupation, but also like you know the the collaborators of the occupation and like people that um, co-conspire with our occupiers and that like are also oppressing us. And so there was a, a critique there, and like we wanted to make it hit, but also like sarcastic in a way. Um, so if you listen to the lyrics of it, it's very sarcastic, and there's also like a translation video if your Arabic is not that strong, like on YouTube, which gives you like some context because sometimes you know if you wanted the translation, but. Yeah, it, it was like our attempt to like say, uh, most Palestinians like for the most part like, reject the Oslo Accords. And so like, it was our way of being like, this is a, Oslo's new birthday song, you know? <laughs> it's like, so, that was the, the idea. I love that. Yeah. Um, do I have time for one more question? Okay, good. I noticed that your mom's voice is on one of the intros. I'm assuming it's your mom on Emel's intro. My grandma. Okay, grandma, even better. <laughs> um, I feel like most of my work is I'm either thinking about my family or writing about my family or resenting my family or, you know, w whatever it is. And so I wonder how much of family comes into your own writing process, whether it's composing or performing. Um, or this sort of dedication to art as a uh, life practice? Yeah, that's, um, that's a great question because I think that I could not, I would not be where I'm at if I did not have like grandparents who were like such thought up listeners, like <laughs> hardcore, like wake up in the morning, thought up channel, like sitting, <laughs> asking me to bring the and be like, play, I would play with them, like that scene for like hours and they'd just be like sitting there listening. So like they taught me, like they shaped 
my perspective um, and like by you know hearing what they would respond to when like when they would say Allah I'd be like oh pe people like that okay I want to do that again you know and so you th that was like a, a constant learning for me that like I was so blessed to have and like and th my grandparents growing up were my next door neighbors so like and they still my tata's my next door neighbor so like right across you know from you're my very parents lucky house. yeah and so like they're a huge influence in my life like my whole entire life but like musically especially they kept me really close to the music and I wanted my tata's voice on the track because she was always telling me like it's, music is nice mom but ta'asim like ta'asim is where it's at like it's nice everyone can play music but you need to play ta'asim because she like wanted to just you know zen out well <laughs> we saw you do ta'asim twice today and uh, i think you made her proud thank you, thank you. <laughs> um thank you very much thank you. thank you for joining us thank you everyone
Chocolat, chocolat, merci beaucoup. Vous êtes bien
سارا هجرو منك ناس شطارا يا وهرنا رحتي خسارا هجرو منك ناس شطارا قعدو في الغربة حيانا والغربة صيبة وغدارا Léo, je voudrais bien plus de voix ici. Ok. Mais ensemble, tu veux dire. Tu veux dire. Mm -mm. قعدوا في الغلب حيانا قعدوا في الغلب حيانا يا فرحي على ولاد الحمري ولاد مدينة سيد الهواري يا فرحي على ولاد الحمري ولاد مدينة سيد الهواري عديت عديت معاهم صغري عديت معاه صغري ليهم باللي طول عمري وصيتني على الناس طلقوا دينهم تبعوا الكاس وصيتني على الناس طلقوا دينهم تبعوا الكاس يكفينا من الكاس والماء يكفينا من كاس والمائدة عشرة بلا فايدة يكفينا من كاس والمائدة راها عشرة بلا فايدة أكرهت يا عنسة ويا 
ما زال بيخلص وهذا غير صوياي قلت لي عفزة وقرأت ينسى وياي ما زال بيخلص هذا غير صوياي البيضة مون عمور البيضة مون عمور البيضة مون عمور نديها بلا سخور وياي اوووي 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 شكرا ما كم ام سبيا سبيا تخدم تخدم اي بريفير
منش من ناقير البابور جابي وا منش من منش من منش من ناقير البابور
ليلى 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 صباح وحشية ليلى يا ليلى زيدي قبيح ليا يا ليلى باغي ندير نية يا ليلى حلي الباب عليا يا ليلى شكرا شكرا يا نيويورك شكرا يا حبيبي فستيفال شكرا ابو ثانك يو